an upturn here. Hey guys, piggybacking off our recent best 18 to 24 volt cordless reciprocating saw head to head test, we wanted to bring out the big boys. We put high capacity reciprocating saws ranging from 36 volts up to 60 volts up against each other to crown the best high capacity cordless reciprocating saw. Cordless reciprocating saw line that we looked at, there was four saws. So it was an easy one for us. We looked at the DeWalt Flexvolt the Makita 36 uh, and the 40 volt saw, as well as the Metabo HPT multi-volt saw. If you're looking for way more information than I'm gonna give in this uh, video, the details and all the specs and all that stuff, go to the toolboxbuzz.com website and read the article. Always has more information. For this head-to-head, -head, we basically mirrored our 18 to 24 volt recip test. We did all the same tests, the same thing. We did the gas pipe cut test for time, the unistrut cut test for time, nail embedded wood cut test timed. We looked at features, ergonomics, size, noise, price, and of course, best value. The best high capacity cordless reciprocating saw was decided based on the sum of each of the first seven categories. We, don't, we didn't use price and, and best value. All of the reciprocating saws were fitted with a task specific new Milwaukee nitrous blade, reciprocating saw blade for the testing. And we thought that would be good because it shifts the focus away from the variation between the different blades and more towards the differences between the individual saws. Milwaukee asserts that that nitrous blade has 25% more carbide, cuts faster, and lasts longer than conventional carbide tooth blades. Sounds good to me. Where do I sign up? So we, we got a bunch and we, we cut a bunch of stuff with it. For this head-to-head, -head, we requested manufacturers to send us two of their batteries for between four and six amp hour ranges. And that was because, uh, you know, we wanted to level the field uh, for the different batteries that companies offer. Some offer big batteries, small batteries, and they could send whatever they want in that range. Testing format. To guarantee that every reciprocating saw received the same cutting pressure, uh, for the nail embedded wood and also our unistrut testing, we started, uh, I should say, we secured a 10 pound weight from an anchor strap on the forward grip of the saw. Uh, with both hands on the saw to get the cut started, the front hand was then removed and just allowed the 10 pound weight to pull that blade through the cut. Some of these saws feature variable speed settings. We used the highest setting available uh, on the saws. For the gas pipe cutting test, a custom uh, saw holding jig was used. Same one we used in the other one. And the jig basically secures the saws, it moves in a vertical motion up and down, and it utilizes timing mechanisms, which were two micro switches that regulate the start and stop time of the cut. The micro switch timing starts as soon as the cut is initiated and stops just after the blade passes through the last piece of material. The cutting force applied during this cut was approximately 25 pounds, which uh, is approximately this, the weight of the saw plus our platform. Uh, plumbing and heating contractors, they're a cool user for gas pipe, so that's why we chose that test. Inch and a half diameter schedule 40 bla um, black steel gas pipe was used. Uh, we used a brand new Milwaukee six inch tor uh, torch blade and um, we made three cuts for time and uh, basically scored it on that. To hold the pipe at the proper height and to keep it secure, we used the Rockwell jaw horses. The winner of the gas pipe test was the Makita XGT 40 volt saw with an impressive average time of 3.55 seconds. Second was the Metabo HBT, which was 5.73 seconds. And third was the DeWalt Flexvolt at 6.10 seconds. Now the slowest saw of the four was the Makita 36 volt and it came in at 11 seconds even. For the Unistrut test, Unistrut's basically a, a support material used for wiring, plumbing, electrical components, and mechanical stuff. Um, we chose this material to represent the electrical and mechanical core traits. Uh, new Milwaukee Torch 6 inch nitrous 7 TPI blades were used on these, in this saw as well, uh, and an average time cut was noted. We also anchored the 10 pound weight to the front of the tool and let the weight dictate that cutting pressure and only putting our hand back on to catch the saw at the end. The cut was done one-handed. Like I said, we wanted to avoid that downward pressure. The winner of this test was the Makita XGT 40 volt with a speed of 2.7 seconds. That's fast. Metabo, 
3.01 uh, seconds, and third place was the Makita 36 volt at 3.54 seconds. Finishing out the saws was the DeWalt, and that came in at 5.40 seconds. The third test we looked at was the uh, nail embedded wood test. Three 2x10s fastened together uh, with 15 16 penny frame nails put into the ends of them. Um, and that became our wood embedded test, like a torture test. So with every third cut, uh, when we change the saw route, we change the, the nails as well. Um, we use the same 10 pound weight and the same cutting method. And this torture test simulates just heavy duty demo cutting for carpenters, remodelers, and general contractors. It's kind of my wheelhouse. In each saw, we utilized a Milwaukee Wrecker 9 inch 6 TPI nitrous carbide blade. Winning the test and achieving a hat trick <laughs> was the Makita XGT 40 volt with an average speed of 30.6 seconds, incredibly fast. Second and third place go to Makita 36 volt and DeWalt flex volt at 40.15 seconds and 47.14 14 seconds respectively. Back of the pack was the Metabo HBT, final time averaged of 53.50 seconds. Let's move on to features. The winner of the features is the Metabo HBT and we looked at for features, we looked at rafter hook, orbital action, uh, blade release lever, LED light. We looked at the shoe plate, the mechanism and the lever. Uh, variable speed, whether it had it or not, how did it work, and any standout features. Now concerning features, the entire team was really disappointed with the DeWalt saw, it, it really is featureless. All right, uh, rafter hook. All of the saws, with the exception of the DeWalt Flex Volt, have a rafter hook. For such a workhorse, it's really a mystery why DeWalt chose to exclude the hook. I mean, was it $5? I mean, we're not really sure why it wasn't put on there. The team favored the Makita 36 volt hook um, because it has a sturdy, large, and straightforward design. It's basic, clean. The blade release lever, the team favored the lever style release lever for changing blades. And we found it faster and way easier to manipulate, even with gloves on, um, than the twisting collets. And it's getting cold here in New England. We are wearing gloves. So the Metabo HPT Makita 36 volt have twisting collets. And that sometimes requires the user to manipulate the trigger, kind of figure, you know, finger the stroke to expose the collet so you can get the blade out. The Makita collet is slightly different. It's spring loaded and it will accept the blade. You just need to um, push it in and it'll twist around it. Uh, variable speed. All four saws have variable speed triggers uh, which is really a must on a, on a recip saw. You need to be able to start the cut slow on a lot of cuts, metal. The Metabo HPT and the Makita saws also have additional top speed controls. So the Makita 40 has a five speed dial on top of the tool, allowing max strokes per minute, basically, from 1,000, 1,500, 2,000, 2,500, and 3,000 strokes per minute. Makita 36 volt has a mechanical switch on the tool's handle, left and right. Uh, it's basically a two-speed control from zero to 2,300 or zero to 3,000 strokes per minute. Metabo HPT has a, a, a button interface below the handle control the, uh, with the LED light as well. From, and it gives you one to four strokes from zero to 1,700, 2,000, 2,500, and 3,000 strokes per minute. We looked at the shoe plates on these, on these saws and the Metabo HPT and the Makita 40 volt both use a lever to adjust the shoe plate. Both plates extend fully and lock, meaning they do not come out of the body of the tool when at full extension, which the team absolutely favored. We like that. It doesn't fall out into the dirt or whatever. Um, the team found that the Makita 40 volt saw shoe plate was tough to slide back and forth and described it as sticky. We even used some silicone, still a little sticky. The DeWalt and the Makita 36 volt do not have adjustable shoe plates. Uh, we moving on to standout features. Now, Something that many people don't get in, in value or get behind in value is the Metabo HPT multivolt adapter. This feature allows the tool to run on both AC DC power. And basically you have to, it's an accessory, you have to buy it, but Metabo HPT 36 volt slag type battery uh, with an AC battery looking adapter and you just plug it in and go. It's pretty cool. Uh, we looked at ergonomics and the winner of that was the Makita 40 volt. And this was a purely subjective test in opinions of the testing crew. And after a full day of using these, and actually several weeks of using them, but a full day of testing with the whole crew, we looked into several categories. So for the ergonomics evaluation, we looked at um, subjective vibration, grip comfort, 
ease of blade change, and ease of shoot plate adjustment. The Makita 40 volt saw is solidly built. It also provides just an excellent UX experience, a user experience. It scored seven points and was tops in vibration, and it came in second in grip, uh, blade changing, and shoe adjustment. The DeWalt 60 volt came in second with eight points, which is really surprising since the team to the team since it's really a, such a featureless workhorse. Um, vibration. For this category, each evaluator ranked the tools based on perceived vibration while performing each of the tests, but also in an additional vibration test. The Makita 40 volt and Metabo HPT had the lowest perceived vibration from the entire team, with many of them commenting how smooth they were to operate. Now the Metabo HPT has what's called user vibration protection, and that's that UVP on the saw. And that basically decreases vibration by incorporating kind of a dual counterweight system. Best describe it as upper and lower counterweight gears spinning in opposite directions. And that's to balance out inertia force, resulting in less significant vibration, or significantly less vibration. All right, um, grip comfort. Tough to pick grip. We all have different size hands and stuff, but uh, we looked at the overall feel of the overmold, the grip, the surface, how it felt in, in the tool user's hand. The team concluded that the DeWalt and the, uh, the Makita 36 volt both had the most comfortable grips. We went on to size, and the winner of that was the DeWalt Flex Volt. To compare the overall size or compactness of the saws, we looked at the length ranking and the weight ranking added together. The tools were ranked smallest to largest and lightest to heaviest. Weight comes in second, in my opinion, after cutting performance when using a recip saw. I want a lighter saw that can get the job done. We weighed each reciprocating saw on a digital scale without the battery and put the results up. The DeWalt Flex Volt took the size category. It measures 18 inches long and it weighs 8.65 pounds as a bare tool. Second is the Makita 36 Volt, 18 inches long, 9.3 pounds. Metabo HPT was third, weighs 8.4 pounds, and it was 18.75 inches long. And weighing it at 9.9 .9 pounds at 18 and a half inches long was the Makita 40 volt, finishing in fourth place. Uh, for noise and decibels, Makita 36 volt took that, and we used a decibel meter, basically measured decibel level in a no load situation, set at the same distance for every saw, so we had consistent results. The saw that was the quietest was the Makita 36 volt with 98.5 decibels. The second quietest saw was the Makita 40 volt, 98.7. And the loudest reciprocating saw was tested was the Metabo HPT, which was um, 100.9 decibels. Third place uh, was the DeWalt had 100 decibels. We moved on to price. Now the winner of the price category was Metabo HPT. When, when deciding which saw a user wants to buy, price is a consideration for many. And we looked at bare tool pricing and we determined that at the time that we did this video. So it might change by the time you watch this six months from now, but most of us could all agree that price is an important factor when you're buying something, especially tools. Uh, and especially to folks just getting into the trades. The reciprocating saw with the lowest price tag was the Metabo HPT at 199 bare tool at Acme Tools. The second cheapest or priced saw was the uh, Makita 36 volt. That was 239. Third place went to the Flex Volt. The DeWalt was $269. We decided to remove pricing from the overall scores as we, we actually feel it penalizes a, a, a really high performing saw, a really well made saw. So we keep it in its own section, we graph it, and we leave it in the review so you can review it and you can evaluate that. Um, these saws all can be found. Most of them can be found at Acme Tools online. Uh, they're a video sponsor of ours, so please check them out. I will put a link in the video description below so that you can get over to Acme and you can purchase these tools if you want. So that brings us to best value winner. I like this category. Metabo HPT 36 volt took this. This category winner often resonates with people because it it's the tool that performs well in the testing, but it's still cost effective, right? So Metabo HPT saw has the best price at 199 bare tool, and it came in second in our testing. Uh, it's a solid performing, full featured saw. So who won the best high capacity cordless reciprocating saw? Well, if you haven't figured it out, Makita 40 volt XGT. The Makita 40 volt saw came in first to achieve the title of the best 
high capacity reciprocating saw. This saw scored 12 total points and dominated all three of our power speed tests, coming in first place in ergonomics, second place in decibels and features. It's a well-designed, feature-rich, super powerful saw. It's diesel. It was a clear standout on testing day. Everybody knew it. The, re uh, the rest of the saws pretty much were close um, with their scoring bracket. So the Makita 36 volt and the Metabo 36 volt uh, tied for second place with 19 points. Both saws hover in the top three or four points for every category that was tested. The DeWalt scored 20 points. At the end of this testing, the team felt that DeWalt really could use some updating to this. So maybe some core features like a rafter hook, maybe set, set speed settings or an orbital action. Um, because that's quickly becoming industry standard for these type of saws. So to conclude, we get lots of comments about how we make our final rankings asking, why didn't you test the tools this way? And why didn't you do it that way? And here's the good news, folks. We've openly shared all of our data for you. We show our charts. You can rank these tools any way you want. You don't care about ergonomics? No problem. Take it right out of your ranking, out of the matrix, re-rank it, go for it hopefully you'll find that at least this head-to-head -head is useful in comparing the heavy hitting reciprocating saws on the market today. The crew at Toolbox Buzz produces many head-to-head -head articles and videos every single year. Um, we welcome you to swing over to our head-to-head -head page on the toolboxbuzz.com website or on my YouTube channel, Concord Carpenter Toolbox Buzz, and check them out. We'd love to hear from you guys. I don't think you'll be disappointed. Guys, I'm Rob Robillard. And please, if you enjoyed this video, give me a thumbs up and especially leave a comment. Tell me your favorite saw and why. Um, also, I'd like to know what you think of the blades and if you made it over to Acme Tools. So leave me a comment, tell me if you did any of that. Uh, please subscribe if you're not already a subscriber and hit that notification bell right there. We'll see you next time at the next Head to Head.